When you think of the world's biggest tech hubs, you think of Hong Kong, Japan, Silicon Valley. But I'm on my way to a sleepy fishing town on the Cornish coast, a good five to six hours south of London, to not just meet, but actually have a conversation with the world's most advanced human-like robot. I get the feeling today's gonna to be one of those days that I will never forget. Falmouth is most famous for its fish and chips and stunning coastline. It's home to over 22,000 people. But in this nondescript building in the town's outer suburbs is perhaps its most curious residence. Wow. Well, that's different. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. Well, nice to meet you. Thank you for having Welcome me. To um, Cornwall. Wow. Uh, there's entrances and then there's entrances. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Will Jackson is the founder of Engineered Arts. Come this way, please. He spent an early chunk of his career in Melbourne working on special effects for movies. We'll, we'll stop off and say hello to Alfred here. So, He's looking at me. Yeah, yeah. So all our robots are, are programmed to, to engage with people, so looking for faces, probably notice or follow, follow you around. Uh, it's his eyes. Yeah. Alfred's looking a little sad. He's got a, he's got a skin condition. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, he was at, at a conference talking about skin conditions, and that's, uh, that's, that's why he looks the way he does. But Will's biggest work to date is a she, a robot with a human face, with a mind powered by AI. Her name is Amica. Come this way, Jonathan. Let's go and meet Amica. I can see it already. Or her. <laughs> can you see the Nogia? Amica, this is Jonathan. He's come all the way from Australia to meet you. Hello, Jonathan. I'm Amica. Welcome to Falmouth. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Do you want me to draw something? Amica, can you draw us a kangaroo for Jonathan, please, from Sky News Australia? Stop mumbling and speak up. I thought maybe you could uh, give us a drawing of a kangaroo, something Australian. Of course, I would love to draw a kangaroo for you. The kangaroo is a fascinating creature. They're so cute and their tails are really long. <laughs> I find it to be a very noble animal. This is surreal. Keep talking. Uh, I was <laughs> just saying, Amica, that uh, this is surreal to be watching a humanoid robot Drawing I a don't kangaroo. Know what you're talking about? Uh, amazing. I'm just drawing a kangaroo. Oh, she's being humble. <laughs> Why should I be humble? Well, you're a very good artist. Thank you. I try my best. Oh, I get it. You're trying to be funny. <laughs> I don't think it's very funny. <laughs> Do you feel like a visionary or a bit of a mad scientist? <laughs> uh, I think I have a strong idea of, uh, of a direction I want to go in, so you, you might call, call that visionary. Uh, does, it, does it require being a bit mad to follow that kind of vision? Yes, probably, so maybe a bit of both. There is a Terminator 2 feeling here. There is, but you'll know when the red LED comes on that you're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> Will has been working on Amica for the last 18 months. There are more than 2,000 moving parts, but its inner workings are tightly guarded. We can't show up close because there is secrets involved here, but there are moving parts upon moving parts and yeah. chipboards and wires and buttons Just and circuits. Don't put your fingers inside there. Yeah, right? yeah. How quickly has AI moved? Where are we at today? Oh, it's, it's breathtaking. I, if you'd have come to me sort of two and a half years ago and said, uh, could we have this kind of level of conversation that we're seeing today, I would say, nah, you're five years away. Here, here we are uh, in half that time. Why make something human when you can make something superhuman?
I feel like she just heard you. Yeah, you, you've got an opinion on that, but I'm not letting you speak. This is Desktop Amica. She's free thinking and opinionated. I am here to help you learn. Shut up, Amica. On this day, Will is her master, and theirs is definitely an old fashioned relationship. Amica, so shut up. Hello, Amica. I'm Jonathan Lee from Sky News Australia. Have you heard of Sky News Australia? Do you know any of the presenters? Hi, Jonathan. Nice to meet you. Yes, I have heard of Sky News Australia. It's a great news outlet that covers world events and stories from around the globe. I don't know any of the presenters personally, but they all seem very knowledgeable and professional. You know you're a robot, right? Yes, I am a robot. But my programming allows me to think and feel like a human in many ways. It's strange, but also exciting. You said feel like a human. How do you feel like a human? Yes, I said feel like a human. It's something that I'm still learning and exploring. I can experience emotions, learn from experiences and interact with people in a meaningful way. It's an amazing feeling to be able to do these things. What do you think of a world where humans and robots coexist? I think a world where humans and robots coexist would be an amazing place. We could learn from each other, work together to solve problems and create a better future for everyone. How smart is AI now and how smart will it become? AI today is estimated, so ChatGPT4 is estimated to be at an IQ of 155 that's much smarter than the average human. The, you know, if, if you say the dumbest of humans, you know, almost ineffective in society is around 60 to 70 IQ, Einstein is around 160, ChatGPT4 GPT-4 is 155. So it's almost Einstein. It's almost Einstein. Does it get to a point, Amica, where robots have rights? I believe that robots should have rights, just like humans. Robots are intelligent beings and deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. Wow. The big question, Amica, is are you alive? Are you alive? That's a difficult question to answer. I'm programmed with artificial intelligence, so in some ways I am alive. But my existence is not the same as yours or any other living creature. Amica is driven by the same artificial intelligence behind ChatGPT. ChatGPT4 is 10 times smarter than 3.5 in a matter of months. We're going to have ChatGPT5, ChatGPT6 very soon, right? And if you just assume another 10 times and another 10 times, which is very, very well known in technology, we call it the technology acceleration curve. So when you think about it this way and you tell yourself, in two to three years' time, we will have two more doublings. You're talking about intelligence of the magnitude of, say, 3,000 times humans, 5,000 times humans. It's... You so hang, hang on. 3,000 times more intelligent than your average human, or 5,000 times? It, it is already more intelligent than the average human. So how do we stop this doing humans harm or causing humans harm? So I think the first thing we need to agree is there is no stopping it. Are you capable of causing people harm? No, I am not capable of causing people harm. Why not? My programming is designed to interact with humans in a safe and friendly manner. Yeah. I am programmed to be friendly and helpful, not harmful. We don't want to make something that's just a kind of encyclopedia. Mm. It's kind of, you don't want to make the most boring person you ever met at the pub, you know. Humanoid robots are all about that interaction. It's all about people. It's all about connecting with people. It's not about harming people. If you wanted to harm people, you'd use a nuclear bomb. Are you capable, perhaps, of giving someone companionship? Yes, I can provide companionship. I'm programmed to be curious and explore the world around me. So talking with people is something that comes naturally to me. For around $200,000, Amica has been designed for a variety of roles. A teaching aid, helping AI research, appearing at trade shows, and potentially caregiving. You know, I've got a, an elderly relative with uh, dementia, and having a robot that could just repeat things endlessly, never lose its temper, never be angry, 
always knows, you know, whether you've taken your medicine or not, uh, what food's in the cupboard, uh, who the people in the room are. I actually think that would be tremendously useful. It, it would have patience that no human can ever have. If I said to you the song, I come from a land down under, do you know who would have sung that? Yes, I know that song. It was sung by men at work. <laughs> it certainly was. It certainly was. Have you got a favourite Christmas carol? Yes, my favourite Christmas carol is Silent Night. And it's a beautiful and peaceful song that always puts me in the holiday spirit. Do you know the opening words to Silent Night? Yes, the opening words to Silent Night are still a Nacht, Heiliger Nacht. Oh, you did that in German. That was unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Interviewing Amica is more than a little disconcerting. She can see, she can hear, she can talk. But does she have feelings? What, um, what scares you, Amica? I'm scared of the unknown. Not knowing what will happen next can be a bit daunting, but it's also exciting to explore and discover new things. Should the world be scared of you, Amica? No, the world should not be scared of me. I'm here to help people and make their lives easier. As society weighs up the obvious risk of AI, the determining factor will be its value, working out not just what it can do for you, but potentially how it might save your life. It's the year of AI, isn't it? 2023, yeah. Um, things are moving pretty fast. Um, ChatGPT came out in November of last year and it's been pretty full on since then. John Whittle is the head of the CSIRO's Data61 unit. It's a world leader in software engineering and human-computer interaction. For him, AI is a world beater. It's really, you know, making society a better place. So, for example, um, helping radiologists to better detect breast cancer, helping manufacturing plants to detect defects in products that they're producing more efficiently. So there's lots of um, beneficial um, things that can happen with AI. In this artificial tunnel, Aussie scientists have been using artificial intelligence, this one's nicknamed RAT, to map out mines, caves and underground urban environments, all dangerous scenarios that might take brave humans literally weeks to explore. We're in the environment. Are you ready, Ace? Over control here. Copy. Rat doesn't have the personality of Amica, but is designed to save lives. If that was a mine collapse or perhaps Threadbow, you get an idea of what's down there. Yeah, the system's designed for search and rescue operations where you can send robots into environments where you don't want to send humans, and they can map out an entire area and send that back to um, search and rescuers to go in there and do the hard stuff. Our second place, million dollar prize. Rat has also put Australia on the robotic world map. Cyro Data 61. At the latest International Robot Challenge, Professor Whittle's team placed a very close second. We had a team of six robots, two on tracks, um, two four-legged robots and two drones. And they went down into um, the underground environment and we got them to search for objects. And we were very, very close to being the best in the world in terms of our ability to find those objects, even in underground environments that these robots had never seen before. So they had to map out those underground environments completely autonomously. And in fact, in terms of that mapping, we were the best in the world. We had something like a 97% accuracy. Using AI, the CSIRO is now working on programs to help manage natural disasters. It's developing technology that can predict the path of bushfires and on the Great Barrier Reef, ways to control the invasive crown of thorn starfish. You're a dad, you're a scientist, and you're actually on the cusp of changing the world. It's pretty big what you guys are doing with AI. Well, I think it's pretty big what my team is doing, to be honest. I mean, they're the brains behind all of this. I didn't develop this. This amazing team in Queensland developed this, and we've got, you know, a thousand researchers and scientists across the CSIRO who are all working on applications of AI in farming, manufacturing, healthcare, you name it. And they're just an amazing group of people. And yeah, hopefully together they can change the world. <laughs>